If you know anything about me, you know that very, very high on my list of favorite games of all time is, in fact, Western Legends. It is a Western sandbox game in which you're going around, maybe getting gold, uh, being an outlaw, running off bandits, herding cattle, all sorts of things, right? A sandbox game, Western Legends, is a near-perfect, wonderful wonderful game that has especially helped through the expansions uh, that have already come out for it thus far. However, today we're diving in and taking a look at Western Legends Anti Up, the newest expansion in the Western Legends franchise. This is adding trains and new gambling mechanics, new gambling tracks, all sorts of things like that. So we're going to take a look right now. What comes with it? Should you get this version? Is it necessary? Does it do anything for the game or is this an expansion you can skip right now? So, a couple of things I wanted to mention before we dive into what's in this box with Western Legends Any Up is when I'm doing this review, I should mention the timing of this is I'm actually doing the review for Western Legends Anti Up as well as Wild Bunch of Extras. Now, the rest of my Western Legends reviews have been separated apart, but that's because I wasn't a backer of the original game, whereas I backed this, and when Wild Bunch of Extras and the Anti Up expansion and the other kind of components came together. I just mixed it all together and threw it in one box. That's the other thing I wanted to mention. Everything, save obviously the neoprene mat, comes and fits inside of this box that you're uh, looking at me out of right now. So that is the good thing to note that everything does fit inside of the main box, the Western Legends box. But um, we are going to be talking about what comes with Wild Bunch of Extras. Again, if you're watching this, there's no reason not to go ahead and get Wild Bunch of Extras as it just accentuates what you get in anti up so let's take a look how it plays right now then we'll do our final thoughts and all such as that right now so as you can see the board is very very much bigger now i'm taking a look at the neoprene mat but even if you were just to add the two board pieces which would be this sideboard over here and then the gambler track board which i'll show you the rest of in a second it's still a huge board when you're used to the old board being basically just this area here so we have quite a large uh, board. So let's take a look at Buzzard Gulch, what kind of comes over here. Now you'll notice that there are these tokens, or they're actually printed on the board in the box, and I'll show you everything that comes in the box as well. I just want to show you the mat first. You're going to get these numbered tokens that will randomly go out on these slots. And essentially, there's a new action called a Frontier Action, in which you're going to discard a numerical amount of your cards. So a 3 would be a 3, a 4 would be a 4, uh, a Jack would be in a, a, a 10... I believe it's 10 left. Anyway, I'll look at that in a minute. But you discard that numerical amount to flip over the Frontier token, and these are things that give you money, items, legendary items, victory points, gold, just tons and tons of good stuff. So it's a new strategy on how to play. You also have a new town of Buzzard Gulch over here. It comes with a marshal's office, uh, a saloon, as well as the trading post, which you'll see that in a minute, the actual small trading post. Um, what's interesting is you take certain items and put them only in the trading post. So they can't be bought in the general store and items in the general store can't be bought in the trading post. You would have to go between the boards to get certain items. Now you'll notice there are ways to go between the boards here and up there. The mountain passes, that's one way to go between the boards. You would stop here spend all of your movement points for one action to come across to the mountain pass over here or over there. Uh, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is you can pay $10 at a train, uh, at the train station to go from that train station to this one over here and then finish your movement action. So there are a couple of different ways to get across the board. So that's interesting to keep in mind as well as the train locations. They will go in these different locations and you can rob the train at those places, which is part of the new board as well. You'll notice that there are event cards, slots for event cards, and those event tokens all go with that. There are slots for train cards as well. When you rob the train, you'll flip it up and you'll kind of follow the script on how to do the train. It's a fight, depending on what's in the type of train car it is, whether it's a passenger car, a cattle car, uh, a gold car, certain things like that, a prisoner car. Uh, there, uh, some of them are traps even, but there are different scenarios. And again, I'll show you all this in a minute. I just want you to see the board for what it is first. Down here is the Pharaoh board. Pharaoh, obviously Wyatt Earp's favorite game, uh, allows you to play a new type of gambling game, which will give you gambling points on the gambler's track, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, it's different though. You be kind of you can play, but you also become the dealer of the game in a sense to be like how in that scene from Tombstone, Wyatt's running the game. 
It's kind of what you do here. If you want to let, if you enter into a Pharaoh action, you allow people to pay money to get into the game. And then you have betting tokens. You can put them on certain cards. You'll flip, you'll take four cards, shuffle them up. You'll see three of them or a few of them. Uh, you'll flip up the first one. If anybody betted on that one, they lose. You flip up the second one. If anybody betted on that, they win a one to one bet for what they did, either 10 or 20. Uh, if you want to keep playing, you can play for the jackpot and flip it up. And uh, the person that bet on the last card that shows wins the rest of the money. It's a three to one uh, sort of odd. So it's a nice little different style gambling game. There's as well, there's high stakes poker in which you get to play a couple more rounds. You actually get a river, a flop, and a turn. So it's nice to have that as well. That's all the new stuff on this sideboard over here. As far as the main board, there are no new actions. Um, one thing to note, this is a different icon on the neoprene mat. This is actually the general store, these horseshoes. They say that will be answered. The reason they did that in the uh, neoprene mat will be answered in the new expansion, which was announced, uh, that goes up in Kickstarter later on. Uh, you also get the rest of the map up here. This is the hand-drawn portion that corresponds to these spaces on the board. So when you're standing here, you can rob the train when it's here. If you're standing here, you can rob the train when it's there. If you're standing here, you can rob the train when it's there. It's just neat little places to rob the train, uh, but it's hand-drawn. It's like a cool map that kind of shows that Western style. The gambler track up there, you move up the gambler track when you play uh, different gambling games. It's nice because you can be on the wanted and Marshall track, or Marshall track, I should say, as well as being on the gambler track. It's just a way to get more legendary points as well as legendary tokens. So whether you play with the legendary tokens uh, variant that you get from gold cards, you still play with legendary tokens because you get them from the gambler track now. That is all the new stuff on the actual board itself. Let's take a look at the rest of the components that come with Anti Up. First of all, I haven't painted this yet, but the new train miniature, it's two-tone, which is very nice to have. Uh, the next thing I wanna show you, and now this is a Kickstarter upgrade, so if you didn't get the Kickstarter, I'm gonna show you what you would get normally, but the cattle are now poker chips. They're actual full-size poker chips, three different types of cattle. Very nice upgrade. However, if you didn't get it, you still get an upsized version of the cattle in these nicely new-sized uh, tokens here. The other cattle tokens, I don't have mine punched because I use the upgrades, are this new size here. If you remember, the, the cattle tokens used to be basically the size of that inner circle there. So these are the event tokens, and these are all different sorts of things where when an event card happens, you'll flip these up. Some of them are unique events, the ones with the teddy bear. Some of them are outlaws. Some of them are claim jumpers. Some of them are... Um, you know, different sorts of things. So what happens is when the event tells you what to spawn, you'll read it off the back of there. It'll tell you what to do. It says if a player loses, they lose all their money and all their gold nuggets. If you win, you gain a legendary item and a gold nugget. They're all fights, but they're unique events based with a slight story. So how do you do that? Well, you see these event tokens out here? Those tokens will go out on the board every five points on the legendary track, uh, every fifth position of a gambler, marshal, and wanted track, as well as you'll reveal and resolve a couple of event cards based on the certain amount of player count that's happening. Uh, there are a couple new poker cards as well that you'll want to take out if you're playing any up versus playing the base game. Um, I will say this. Now, the people were complaining in the Kickstarter that they could see and feel differences in the, the poker cards. It just never came up for me. And I'm, I'm a huge Western Legends mark, so I do tend to be uh, very positive about the game. That never once came up. I never noticed an issue with that. Also, you get new legendary tokens. These are bigger than the old ones were as well. Uh, same sort of thing, though. They just are what they are. Points on the back. There's some higher point ones now. These are those claim frontier tokens I was talking about. I wanted to show you these. Uh, frontier tokens so you'll add this out there so if this is sitting on there you would need to discard 11 worth of cards out of your hand to get this to flip this says draw two legendary tokens and keep one so tons of really great easy things that you get for these new actions now here's the trading post again this wooden version is a Kickstarter upgrade you would get that nice cardboard that comes in the base game if you did it uh, the trading post corresponds to that location out there you seed this with random items depending on how many you're playing with that's how many you put in the trading post it does change depending on if like if you don't own all the expansions you put less out here than you would uh, in the original but uh, there are a few new items that I want to show you the snake oil is a new item it says action discard this to roll one prospecting die and gain the result move the sheriff to a space adjacent to you so you're you know you're selling some Pretty shady stuff. Uh, the holster, after cards are revealed in a fight, you may discard any number of poker cards to decrease the number value. That one, I think, was in the uh, last expansion. But I want to show you some of the other items really quick. And I'll show you some of the new characters, including Curly Bill, Johnny Ringo. Can't get better than that. So 
Uh, I'm a huge mark for the workhorse. Now, this came in the last expansion. You saw me talk about this. It does change the game. It's so good. Such a great strategy. A couple new items, though. The quarter horse. It is only $30. has a base speed of three, but it does some interesting things. It says, after the end of a move action, you may discard a poker card to move an additional space. So, it costs you a poker card to move four. However, the upgraded side, it does move four, and it has a reaction. At the end of a move action, flip this to draw one poker card and gain an action. So it flips back over to the regular quarter horse, but you gain an action if you're willing to do that. So really neat stuff. There's the Derringer as well. Uh, it kind of has the same sort of deal where after this cards are revealed in a fight, flip this over to the other side to discard your card and replace it with the top card of the poker deck. So neat little things that come just from this expansion. The Gazette. Now this has to do with event tokens. I really like this. First of all, after you gain this, resolve an event. Boom, you just immediately resolve an event. Discard is a reaction after gaining any number of martial points, wanted points, or gambler points to gain an additional point of the same type. That's huge. So you use a bunch of those in the game, you're going to just shoot up that track. Uh, normal revolvers. There are a few new legendary items, including, oh, let's see, there's marked cards. Big fan of that as a card magician myself. Huge, huge fan of that. Um, let me see if I can find the one that I'm a, the biggest fan of just because it's so reminiscent of the movies. Uh, there's the lucky coin. There we go. There's the Serape right there. And look under it. It's got the metal plate just like the Clint Eastwood movie made famous again in Back to the Future 3. So really neat items went into this. Unique items. Let's show you what the event cards and train cards look like. And that pretty much wraps up all the major concepts. Again, there are things like gangs and posses. There are, you know, you can go to the outlaw location. You can go to the gang location and get new... Um, it's a new sort of action that, that kind of will let you have slightly more powers. When I show, when I get to that card, I'll show it to you. But right now, let's take a look at these event cards and train cards. First and foremost, you have the event cards here with the bell on the back. And then you have the train cards here. I do like that on the neoprene mat, there's a place to sit these. So these will just go out here. Uh, the event cards, we will, when you resolve them, you'll turn it over and read it. So this says, Spawn an Outlaw at the Mountain Pass C and the Outlaw Camp. So that's over there. So both of those are over here move the train to the Buzzard Gulch Rail Station. So then you would flip over one of these tokens, or you wouldn't flip it over, you'd put one of the outlaw tokens out on that location, and then whenever you land on it, you'll take the uh, actions listed on the back of it. Now some of them are specific. So there's this Bath Cat one, which by the way is a reference to a Cormac McCarthy novel. Um, let's see, this one's old Flippy. This one says, flip the token. If it lands on a wound, you gain a wound and move the token to another rail station. Otherwise, discard the token, gain $20, and a gambler point. So it's neat. It lets you flip the token that's out there on the board. So some of these have unique items. There's a grizzly bear that you can fight. Um, but most of them are going to be these claim jumpers, high rollers, and uh, outlaws, and then longhorns as well. Longhorns can be used just like a regular cow. They, you can carry them. They do slow you down, but when you deliver them, along with your other cattle, you gain a legendary point in $30. So that's what the event cards do. As far as the train cards, there's all sorts of different train cards, things like payroll train, draw three fight cards, that's who you'd fight. If you win, you gain 80 bucks and three wanted points. If you lose, you gain a wanted point. Uh, but look at this, there's the armaments one, it gives you an upgraded weapon of your choice and two wanted points. There's a cattle train, there's a passenger car, there's a trap, army transport, uh, just all sorts of Pinkerton car, circus train, I love that, legendary item if available. So just all sorts of different types of trains that you can rob. And whenever you flip it over, you're going to see what you're robbing. And then, all right, new characters. We have the Sundance Kid. We've got Pearl Hart. Uh, this guy, Sundance, Paul Newman? I don't remember. Uh, he lets you move to where the train is located. Pearl Hart, uh, if you gain any number of martial wanted points, you may draw a poker card and move up two spaces. Curly Bill. I'm going to let you read the powers if you want to. You can just pause to read. Seth Bullock, straight out of Deadwood. Soapy Smith, saw a little show about him in Alaska one time in Skagway. Pretty neat. Uh, Feely Wong. Uh, Tuberquio Vasquez. His is a little tricky. So basically what it means is you can move from the wanted to the uh, marshal track. In, it, you, if you're on level two of the wanted track, you move to level two of the um, marshal track. So it's kind of neat. Maria uh, Gertrudis Barcelo. Butch Cassidy, I think he was already in this. Yeah, so you're seeing all the new characters that are in this expansion as well as some of the ones I haven't played at yet, as yet from the other expansions. Pat Garrett, Johnny Ringo, yes. Dave Rudaball, Poker Alice, you can start a poker game anywhere and anybody can join in. Love it. 
Uh, and so these are all the new ones. Here's those posse and gang cards I was talking about. So if you go to the Outlaw Hideout and join, you can spend $20 to get this. It just says at the start of a fight, draw an extra poker card. At the start of an arrest, you gain two poker cards. And if you would lose a fight, cancel any wounds you would discard. You gain and discard this. The posse side, you get from the marshal station at the other place. Um, draw a poker card, move up three spaces, and the same kind of thing. So just a neat little perk. That's kind of what a lot of the, or not a lot, I should say, a lot of the things are pretty major overhauls uh, in filling out the game. But a lot of it also does little tweaks like that that allow you to have more options when playing the game. And let's face it, that's one of the best parts about Western Legends in the first place is the sandbox feel of it. So having more options to do things. So that's it. That is Western Legends any up in a nutshell. Now, first question, obviously, is should you get this when it comes to is it a necessary expansion? In my opinion, yes. I will never play without the Western Legends anti-up expansion because it does so many things right. It fills out the game, adding so many more strategies, adding so many more tactics and things that you can use to win the game instead of just going for gold, just getting cash and going to the saloon, or just running off bandits, right? There are so many other strategies. Now, having a combination of the workhorse and the longhorns and all these sorts of things, Rustling and wrangling cattle now becomes a super viable option, especially if you're using things like the new items like the Gazette, right? There's the Claim Jumper tokens that give you, or not the Claim Jumper, the Frontier tokens that give you so many new ways to score points, right? There's the, you know, the new gambling mode where you can be the best of the best of, you know, Marshall or uh, wanted character, but you can also be a gambler and boost those points up, which would allow you to get legendary points as well as legendary tokens, which you can totally swing the victory of a game from having the best legendary tokens. Uh, I love the fact that it adds robbing the train, it adds the events, you know, you still have the story cards, which were kind of an old school event system in the first version. Now you have this event system, which adds stuff to the board and populates it and you go and see it. Uh, real talk, the the game came out really close to the same time the first one around the same time as red dead uh red dead redemption 2. one of the best games of all time it's my favorite video game of all time surpassing that metal gear solid and chrono trigger right however this game before anti-up came out it felt like that right until you started playing, you go, wait, man, wouldn't it be cool if you could do this or this or this? Well, anti-up really adds that. The ability to rob trains, the ability to do more things on the board that either you can interact more with other characters or you can refuse to. You know, playing Pharaoh and being much more like... Uh, uh, like Wyatt Earp, you know, doing his favorite game and all sorts of things like that. All the wonderful characters and history it adds. I just think that Western Legends Any up adds so much more to the events. That's one of my favorite aspects through the new board, right? I love the fact that there's two areas now and you can move between these two areas. You can hop a train if you want to. You can rob that train if you want to. Uh, between the fact there's a trading post and now you can claim frontiers, right? I love that fact that you can actually win this game if you're out there claiming the frontier, you know? Uh, there's new poker cards. This is a total win-win for me. All of the components are great. I didn't have a problem. There were some people who said, well, they didn't match up with the original components. It didn't seem that way for me. Maybe I'm just overlooking it, but if we're playing this enough times and there's that many of us and none of us noticed, I would say that it's probably not an issue then, right? Uh, but Western Legends Annie Up, it's so, so, so good. It fills the game out. It makes it a complete version of Western Legends. You should probably never play Western Legends without it now at this point. Will I if someone has it and they want me to play? Of course I will. But if they have Annie Up, I'm definitely going to suggest we play Anti Up every time just because of all the things that it does add to it. So. Western Legends Any Up is a total win for me. You should definitely get this. You should definitely pick it up with Wild Bunch of Extras. All those wonderful little things and tweaks that it adds, such as the uh, specific event tokens. Those are cool. Uh, the new characters that Wild Bunch of Extras add. You don't want to miss out on that. So definitely go pick these up. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Another win for Western Legends. Continuing to keep it in one of my highest games of all time. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that sort of stuff, at Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we'll see ya. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.